I swear it's serious. You who are watching this video have the real possibility of traveling to the year 2567. I'm not kidding. Leaving 2024, which is when I'm recording this video, to almost 500 years later. And if you want, you can go even further ahead, like to 5784, or if you prefer, you can even go back to 1445. To do this, just enter a certain machine and in a few hours, you'll get there. And it's not even that difficult. It costs a few thousand dollars, but you can pay in installments. And I know it sounds like fiction, but I assure you it's true. I'll explain it better in a moment. In the meantime, do you want to hear another riddle about time travel? And it's also true. This case happened in 1582 in Spain. A nun named Teresa of Avila died on October 4th. She was buried 24 hours later on October 15th. How was that possible? Don't worry, I will explain that too. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. Both the case of the time-traveling nun and the story of you going to the years 2500 are situations that are directly related. It all begins with the origin of time, or in this case, the marking of time. I don't know if you've ever wondered, but when did humans start measuring the duration of days and years? We know that the day represents the Earth's rotation, which is the turn the planet makes around its own axis, and that the year is related to the Earth's revolution, which is the complete orbit of the planet around the Sun. And these two movements, of course, are natural. But the way of measuring these movements is artificial, created by humans. So why was a day specifically divided into 24 parts and not, say, into 10, 100, or any other round number? One of the main theories states, attention to an apparently random explanation, that this division happened because humans have five fingers on each hand. The Sumerians, a people who lived about 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, had a counting system that used the thumb touching the joints of the other fingers. And with that, with one hand, they counted up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The Babylonians then would have inherited this counting system and when they created the first sundial, they divided the daytime period into 12 parts and consequently the nighttime period as well. And with that, the days came to have 24 parts or 24 hours. Okay, but what is the relationship between this and the years? A year has 365 days because the Earth makes approximately 365 rotations during a revolution. But why were these 365 days divided into 12 months, each with about 30 days? The most likely origin lies in the moon. After all, a complete cycle of new moon, waxing, full, and waning lasts about 29 and a half days, which, when multiplied by 12, gives 354 days. In other words, practically a perfect year. But that's where the problem lies. Practically. This shows that the solar and lunar calendars are not perfectly synchronized. There is a small difference between them, but over the last few centuries it has caused a real temporal knot, which I will try to untangle now. In ancient Rome, the calendar used was lunar, divided into 10 months, from March to December. January and February did not yet exist. That's why, by the way, September was the 7th month, October the 8th month, November the 9th month, and December the 10th month. Now it all makes sense, right? Well, these 10 months added up to 304 days. The rest of the time, which was the harshest phase of winter when there was no work to be done in the fields, simply was not accounted for. In other words, between the 304 official days of the calendar and the 354 actual days of the lunar year, there were exactly 50 days left without a month to call their own. And to solve this problem, King Numa Pompilius created the two new months, January and February, which added up to a total of 51 days. And why not 50 to complete the 354 days of the lunar year? The answer is due to superstition. People at the time did not like even numbers, so the year came to have 355 days. But as we know, the solar year has 365 days. To correct this 10-day difference, the workaround they invented was to create an additional month from time to time called Mercedonius. Leave a comment here if you have a birthday in a Mercedonius. However, the inclusion of this additional month depended on the political will of the rulers, and sometimes it was even forgotten during periods of war, for example, until it reached a point where the official calendar was completely messed up and out of sync with the seasons. The discrepancy was already more than 60 days, and that was when Emperor Julius Caesar decided to set things in order. First, he ordered the extraordinary creation of two additional months for only one year, in addition to Mercedonius. 
And with that, the year 46 before Christ, or 46 before the Common Era as it has been called, became known as the Year of Confusion, since it lasted 15 months, or exactly 445 days. And there you are complaining that this year is going by slowly. Right after the Year of Confusion, the Julian calendar came into effect, in honor of Julius Caesar himself. The rules are well known to us, 365 days, with an extra day every four years, and also in honor of Julius Caesar, the former month Quintilis was renamed July. And then, in honor of Emperor Augustus, the old month Sextilis was renamed August. It so happened that August had one day less than July, and since maturity was not the strong suit of the emperors, they needed to take a day from February so that both July and August would have the same 31 days, and no one would be upset. And that's how we almost arrived at the calendar as it is today. Almost. The issue is that, with the advancement of astronomy, experts realized that the leap year rule still had a small flaw. This is because the year lasts exactly 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. Adding an extra day every four years would only work perfectly if the year had exactly 365 days and 6 hours. This difference of 11 minutes and 14 seconds may seem insignificant. But over the centuries, everything became increasingly desynchronized again. And that is why in the year 1582, Pope Gregory decreed the creation of the calendar that is in use today, called the Gregorian calendar. And in this calendar, we have a leap year every four years. However, this does not happen every 100 years, but it happens again every 400 years. Confused? Here's how it goes. The year 2000 was a leap year, but the year 2100 won't be. 2200 and 2300 won't be either. 2400, yes, will be a leap year again. When this new calendar was instituted, it was necessary to correct the gap of 11 days that had been accumulated over the last centuries. And that is why, from October 4, 1582, humanity jumped directly to October 15, 1582. And that is where the solution lies for the case of the time-traveling nun. She died precisely the day before the calendar adjustment, and she was buried normally the next day. However, the next day was actually 11 days later on the calendar. Okay, but what about the other riddle I brought up at the beginning of the video? That story about traveling to the year 2567? This is the time to explain. As I mentioned a little while ago, the Gregorian calendar is still used today, right? However, not in the entire world. Different countries and different religions adopt, even today, different ways of counting time. In Thailand, for example, the calendar used is the Buddhist calendar, and it begins counting from the death of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, which occurred 2,567 years ago. In other words, if you want to travel to the year 2567, it's quite simple. You just need to catch a plane and head to Thailand. It's even possible to arrive in other years. It all depends on the predominant religion in each place. Among the Jews, the new year is celebrated on Rosh Hashanah, marking the beginning of the world religiously 5,784 years ago. For Muslims, the current year is 1445, counting from Muhammad's flight from Mecca to Medina. And even among Christians, there are different calendars. In Ethiopia, for example, the Orthodox Church calculates that the birth of Jesus Christ occurred seven years and eight months later than what is considered by most other churches. In other words, over there, it is still 2016. TikTok hasn't even been invented yet. The detail is, the year has 13 months. 12 of them with 30 days and a 13th month with five or six days, depending on whether it is a leap year. This is what they call Pagume. In short, these are just a few examples of countries with different timelines. But to be clear, Traveling to these places is not exactly a journey through time. You will not actually be going to the past or the future. You will simply be experiencing cultures that measure the passage of time in a way that is different from what we are used to. In some cases, there are even two different markings in the same place. This is the case, for example, with Nepal. It is a country that already likes to be different, starting with its flag. In terms of time measurement, there are also some peculiarities there. To start here, the time zone is broken into 45 minutes. So for example, when it is midnight in Brazil, it is 4 a.m. in Portugal, 5 a.m. in France, 6 a.m. in Egypt, 7 a.m. in Armenia, and 8.45 a.m. in Nepal. Additionally, there are two calendars in effect there at the same time. The national calendar is the Nepal Sambat, which is in the year 1144. However, the more traditional Hindu calendar, called Bikram Sambat, is in the year 2080. And Nepalese people who work for international companies also need to closely follow the Gregorian calendar which is in 2024. And I just know that I wouldn't want to be, for example, a Nepalese programmer. Another country where there are multiple ways of counting time is South Korea. But there, it relates to people's age. 
Each South Korean can have up to three different ages. One of them is the international age, which most of the world adopts. You turn one year exactly one year after your birth. But some people have the tradition of celebrating everyone's birthday on January 1st. And others still consider that in addition, people are already one year old at birth, not zero. In other words, a baby born on December 31st would already be two years old the next day. And to put an end to this confusion, as well as the economic cost that these different rules cause for the country, the government there decided to officially abolish these parallel calculations and keep only the international age. Even so, of course, many people still consider that they have different ages, since a tradition does not end overnight. And that is the key word for us to understand why there are so many different timelines around the world. Tradition. After all, it is these cultural differences that make human beings so interesting. And even though it might cause some strangeness, there is no problem with the coexistence of different calendars. Just as each place has its own laws, languages, and religions, they can also have their own calendars. Each will have its advantages and disadvantages. Even our Gregorian calendar, for example, also has its flaws. After all, the first month of the year has 31 days. The next one has 28, but sometimes it has 29. And then the next one has 31. And then the next one has 31 again. And then the next one has 30. It seems kind of random and is hard to memorize. But could there not be a perfect calendar? Some kind of mathematical pattern that would make all the months more organized than they are today. There is a proposal called the International Fixed Calendar. The idea here is to divide the year into 13 months of 28 days, totaling 364 days. And to complete the 365, the last day of the year would be called Day of the Year. It would be a worldwide holiday that would not belong to any day of the week. Moreover, every four years there would be an extra day, just like in our traditional leap years. And since it would be a fixed calendar, this means that every month would start on a Sunday, the 1st, and end on a Saturday, the 28th. This would give the calendar a very well-defined pattern. Your birthday, for example, would always fall on the same day of the week for the rest of your life. In any case, it's very unlikely that any country would decide to adopt this new way of calculating time at this stage of the game. It is most likely that we will continue using the Gregorian calendar for a long time. But this video is full of buts. There is another place where the way of marking time is still completely open and no one knows for sure how it will be done. And I am talking about Mars. After all, think with me, the year on Mars takes much longer than on Earth. It lasts the equivalent of 687 Earth days. Since a day on Mars is a little longer than on Earth, a year there has about 669 Martian days, so to speak. So, what would this calendar look like? This is a really important question, considering humans' plans to one day colonize the neighboring planet. And that's why there are already some proposals for a Martian calendar. One of the main ones is called the Darien Calendar, created by aerospace engineer Thomas Gangale and named after his son Darius. In summary, the idea is to divide the year into 24 months with varying durations between 27 and 28 days, but there are many possibilities still under discussion. For example, what would be the first year of this calendar? Perhaps our year 1610, when Mars was first observed by Galileo Galilei. Or perhaps our year 1975, when the first probe was sent to Mars. Or even, who knows, the eventual year when the first human sets foot on the red planet. Other issues are related to details such as the names of the months. One of the main suggestions involves names of constellations, like Sagittarius and Scorpio. But that's just one of the possibilities. And that's why I want to end this video with a challenge. If you had to choose the name of one, or even all the months of Mars, which would you choose? Share in the comments because I am very curious to know. Also feel free to leave your suggestion for which video you would like to see on the channel. Thank you very much and see you next time.